right, Metalheads, we got Kyle from Dynahead on the line. What is up, my brother from Brazil? How's it going? Hey, Spencer, doing great right now. Uh, I'm a little afraid that we may have some rain right here, so if it rains, I may get a little power shortage or something, so please don't be mad at me if I, uh, if I fall off line. <laughs> it's all good, man. It's all good. Is it is it starting to warm up down there for you guys, or is it still cold? Uh, yeah, it's it's a little hot right here, but it just started rainy season, so there's some really badass rains fell falling right now. Okay. Yesterday just kind of really tore everything apart, you know. So we are trying. We're still counting the bodies. Can you um? Okay, well let's let's you know because obviously the, you're not the whole band. You're just one member of the band. So yeah. can you just can you just go ahead and like and name everybody off and what their spot in the band is? Uh, well, I'm the singer. Uh, I also record and produce and uh, most of the songs. I'm also the producer and mixer and that kind of stuff. You also have Pablo Villela, who is the guitarist. Uh, uh, Diogo Maffa, who is the other guitarist. Uh, Rafael Dan. Uh, well, actually, it's not Rafael anymore. Sorry. Uh, it used to be Rafael. You had a drummer. But he moved to Amsterdam, and now we have a new guy who's an awesome guy, who's a great drummer, and who just joined the band. So I'm kind of uh, uh, I, I'm not used yet with that. So who is uh, Dead Santos, and the bassist is Diego Teixeira, who uh, put the band together with me in 2004. Okay, and that's always my next question: How long have you guys been together? So, so it sounds like you started in 2004. How did you guys? How did you guys get together and act, you know and decide, hey, let's let's make a band? Well, it all started with me and Diego. You know, we just wanted to play together. We always uh, hang out in each other's uh, house, and you know, we always try to record some some stuff just for fun and just say, well, let, let's put a band together. Okay, so we found this guy who's called Victor, who was the first guitarist of the band, uh, who left in two thousand and six. Uh, and we started playing some covers just for the fun, and we started to see that you know uh, things were kind of starting to sound cool, and you know we started to write some stuff from from our own, and it started from that, just from uh, real intention of having fun at first. That's cool. What um, okay, so you mentioned you you do producing and recording. So did you produce and record this al this current album yourself, or did you guys go into a studio? Yeah, it was all recorded uh, by myself, uh, and I did everything, the mixing, the mastering. The first album, Antigen, that is free uh, in our website, if you want to download it, feel free to do so, uh, was mastered by James Murphy, who was the guitarist for uh, Testament Obituary. Uh, but now for this one, we were kind of uh, in a, a little shortage of money, so we just tried to you know, do everything in our own, and the result is pretty, it's pretty good, you know? everyone is pretty happy with it. Yeah, I think it sounds really good, and to be honest with you, I couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> so, <laughs> Thanks, man. That's good. So that means you did a good job, obviously. Cool, cool, yeah. Uh, that, that, that's a very good thing to hear because, well, uh, I actually always try to work the best when I try to do some, some stuff. It's a little hard when I do my own band. Uh, I, I work a lot with other bands, you know, but in my own band, I start to get a little, it's a little weird um, because you're listening to your own voice. You're listening to your own music, so it, it's, it is much harder to mix and to master a, a record you, you you made than someone else's music. So it, it, it's, I always get a little bit nervous when I'm doing this. Do you find yourself like more? Do you find yourself like overcritical of yourself? Yeah, overcritical, and at the same time, I feel a lack of objectivity. You know, because I'm listening to my own voice and my own songs, and I'm kind of used to it. Right. So I, I'm always afraid that I may not uh, have the uh, be critical enough. You know? Oh, right. So you might you might hear something over and go, "Oh, that sounds great," when really maybe it doesn't, just because you're kind of jaded because it's you. I I get it. Yeah, yeah. What um? And, so and sometimes how, it's good, sorry, go but ahead. you 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 kind of hate it because it's yourself. You know when you listen to your own voice recorded, when you record like on the phone, and you listen afterwards and say, "Well, that's how I sound." You know. Uh, uh, my voice sucks, <laughs> so uh, it, it, it's, it's a little weird uh, feeling when you're working with, with your own voice and, and, and music and that stuff. Well, I totally get that because I always, I always go back through and edit and try to clean up the interviews after I do them, the ones that are you know at least to when I'm going to podcast or put them on YouTube or something, and I'm like I do not think I sound like that, but apparently that's how <laughs> I sound. So yeah, I get it. Yeah. 
So, um, so what's the music scene like there right now? I mean, you know, you're not the first uh, band. You're not the you're not the first band from from actually your town that I've spoken with. So, it seems like there's a lot going on there. Yeah, uh, well, in Brazil we have a, a huge scene. Uh, we have a lo lots of awesome bands, but uh, things are a little different, you know, because we don't have the same kind of structure. We don't have the same kind of uh, of uh, we were not so, so tight as a scene as it is in, in the U.S., for example, or in Europe, where, you know, to, to tour in Brazil, which is a country that is so big, it's almost as big as the entire Europe, you know, uh, for, for us to go and to play in our city is a, is a very long travel, it's a very long road, you know, and in the United States, in, you know, like in, in the West Coast and in the East Coast, all of the cities are very close and very clustered together, you know, so it's easier to have like a, a brotherhood, it's, it's easier to have, you know, like a scene where, where there's a huge rotation of artists playing all over the place. And here in Brazil, it's, it's very hard, you know, because we don't have money, we don't have the resources, we don't have uh, big record companies uh, putting money, putting money, you know, investing money in, into the scene. But we have several very talented artists, you know, and, and some awesome bands going on right now. Yeah, have you guys? So have you ever got? No, mumble in my words. Have you guys ever been to the U.S. to play? No, never to play. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a huge dream we have uh, to play in the U.S. You know, but we, we have many fans over there. But it, it's, it's, it's a problem because it's too expensive for us to go. You know, it, it's, it's not like it's a band from New Jersey. You know, to go to like New York. You know, right? It, 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 from here to the U.S., we really need to have a lot of shows and shows that play us really well. So we're not going to get broke doing this. You know. No, I know. I, I, I get that. I, I've been looking because I, I really very badly want to uh, I want to visit Brazil sometime in the near future. And just looking at plane tickets and so, just just to get there, the, the money it's going to cost me, it's like, oh, I've got to save up for a bit here. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, actually, right now it's much easier because uh, the plane tickets are cheaper than it was like 10 years ago, you know, and... Uh, the currencies are pretty similar, you know, here in Brazil and in the U.S. So it's not really different, much different, you know. Like uh, it, your money is going to be, a, a, if you come here with a hundred dollars, you know, your hundred dollars is going to uh, have a good value here. You know, it's not like it's a very strong currency compared to the dollar. Uh, but it's very expensive, you know. Everything is very expensive, you know, the booking and to get some place to stay. You know, when you go for travel, like for like yourself or with a couple of friends, it's one thing. But with a band, you know, right? You have all your gear to bring and all that stuff on top. Yeah, the things are very expensive, and you know, some bands they just go. You know, they have the resources, so they go. But that's not the case with us, unfortunately. Well, you know, unfortunately, there's a lot of really good bands out there that have are in the exact same situation. They just don't have the resources to, because it. I don't know. It seems like around here these days, at least in the U.S., if you know, if you want any chance of making it big or want any chance of making any, you know, and not that you should be doing it for money, but if you want any chance of that, you really got to get out and tour, and obviously that's expensive. Yeah, I think that it has like two sides, you know, because uh, I agree that if you want to get known, you really need to tour. But right now, with the internet, it's not so mandatory anymore. Right. Uh, it was like 10 years ago, 20 years ago. You know, it's, it's not like the 80s anymore. You know, like the 90s. Right now, we have many bands that never played live, but that have a huge audience. You know, and they never uh, went on a stage. So, uh, on the other hand, uh, it is getting harder and harder because there are so many bands, and there, uh, there are just so many people trying to get somewhere. You know, and they are just paying to play. You know, they, they just go and, and make a, a U.S. tour. Or a new tour without you know receiving anything, it, it actually lose a lot of money, a shitload of money, and that's something that you know it, it, it's impossible for many people, even for several bands of the U.S. that I know that they always you know they always want to come and play in Brazil and South America or Europe, you know, and they just can't because it's too expensive and and all of those guys who are paying to do this, they just kind of uh, make their promoters used to you know having artists paying for them to play, and that's very bad for everyone. Right. Have you? One of my dreams of coming to Brazil is to come to one of the the uh, the Rock in Rio festivals. I think that would just be amazing. Have you ever been to any of those? Yeah, I've been in Rock in Rio three. That was uh, ninety ninety nine, I guess. I don't remember very well. 
it's a huge, huge festival. Uh, then they start doing it in Europe. I don't know why, but you know, since it's called Rock in Rio, it makes no sense. But they start doing it like in, in, in Lisbon and in Madrid, you know, and in several uh, places in Europe because of the currency. Because you know, like the, the, the currency here was too strong and the taxes were too high. So they just came to the conclusion that it was better to make the festival in Europe. So go figure, right? And this year we had here in, in Brazil again, uh, I didn't have a chance to go, but I saw it on television. It was a massive, massive uh, event. Yeah, one of one of my favorite songs to listen to is Iron Maiden when they do and they're singing "Fear the Dark." And my favorite version is the is live and real version with the crowd singing. I just I can't even imagine the energy with all them people. Holy cow! Yeah, I was there. It was there like uh, two hundred thousand people. It was insane. Uh, it was kind of impossible to get near the stage because it would be crushed. You know, I was right. there. I was singing, but I was a little far away. So. So um, okay. So so you got the band. What? When you guys when you guys write write your songs and you you know and you're working on an album, who kind of does like one person kind of do all the writing and then gives then kind of presents it to the rest of the band? Or you guys collaborate more? How do you guys do that? Uh, we, we collaborate a lot, but usually what we do, uh, at least for this new album for Universe, which I think it re re went really well. Is that everyone try to write whatever they can on their own? Uh, you know, they try to get the better, best ideas they can, and then we go just go all together. You know, and based on that, we start to to put the songs together. You know? So, it's, it's, it's a collective, but it's not like we go to a studio without knowing anything. You know, just start jamming. We usually come already with some riffs, with some ideas. You know, sometimes uh, I write entire songs, or sometimes Pablo or Diogo they write entire songs and break them pretty much done you know uh, and then I go and write lyrics uh, based on them very cool is there any you guys have any kind of message you're trying to put out there in your music uh, yeah it's, uh, uh, this new album is con it, it, it follows a concept you know it, it is about astronomy it was uh, influenced by several things that I have been uh, immersing myself over the couple last couple of years uh, so it, it, it is kind of a tale of birth and death uh, based on the life cycle of the universe and making kind of a, uh, linking it to our own lives you know, the way that we are born, the way that we grow up, we live and we die which is in, in a very close uh, relationship with the rest of the universe and the first album, Antigen, it, it, it is a kind of a mishmash of things it is a, it's a mixture because we have songs from uh, as early as 1996 uh, and some other songs that we wrote uh, more recently so there there there's there is a lot of different uh, subjects but overall the message and that's the where the title of the album came from is that we see uh, kind of the, the mankind as, uh, as some kind of a disease you know for 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 the nature and for the ecosystem uh, and the antigen that the album talks about is this antigen to this disease, you know, like uh, to the disease of our ignorance or, or, and of our extreme power or, and of our capacity of, of you know, uh, using our intellects to, to raise, you know, to create destruction you know, in, in, in environment and in society. And we see music as some kind of a little tool, you know, to make people more conscious and more in, in, and more interested in understanding, you know, what is our role in the world, and that's why you know, we call the album Antigen, because it's kind of a part of an antigen to this disease of man. Huh. Very cool. Thank you for sharing that exclamation with me. I appreciate it. I'm yeah, always, it's, always, you. it's always interesting to, you know, to hear, kind of, you know, actually hear the take. Because, you know, all the time you read reviews and stuff about albums and bands and people have all these different ideas and usually they're wrong so <laughs> well I, I don't think they're wrong because uh, actually I, I really because uh, there are several things I mean overall for example Universe is a, is a novel about uh, astronomy right it, it, it's, it, it's about also about a cycle of birth and death right but uh, but that's all I, that I can say I mean everything else is up to the listener you know? and, and I have read and I have seen many interpretations, you know, they were just incredible, you know, they just 
Okay, and sometimes it's as if the person really came into my mind and figured out exactly what I was thinking when I wrote the song. And sometimes the, the person had such an interpretation that was so deep, you know, there's something, I mean, that was beyond what I could conceive, you know. So there's always a lot of room for the person to have, you know, uh, to understand uh, the way they want. For example, in the first album, uh, there's, a, there's a song that's called Depart Now, which is uh, somewhat of a mellow song, a ballad. Uh, and kind of, I just made the song as if it was a, a love song, but it's not, you know. Uh, anyone who goes and reads to the lyrics, you know, and they just start thinking, yeah, it's a love song, but actually it's not. And some people realize that. You know, but some people did, uh, didn't. You know, some people uh, see it as a love song and they are happy about it. Yeah, and I say, yeah, that, that's good. It works too. But I mean, you can understand it as uh, as you wish. Right. Okay. Well, and I'm and I'm going to put that to the test because I just actually it's it's funny that you've been talking about the old album because I was checking out your guys' website again today and I noticed that you had it up there for free for download for free and I was like, I don't have this music. I need to download it. So I did. I haven't listened to it yet though. So. Yeah, I hope you like it, man. I will. Um, yeah, well, if it's if it's anything close to the new album, I'm sure I will, because the new album's killer, dude. Thanks, man. Thanks. I really appreciate that. And uh, we've been playing. It's funny because we've been play. I've been playing you guys on my show, and I've also stopped in or tuned in and heard other DJs playing your stuff too. So it's it's not just Good. me. You know, it's it's it. The word that Dynahead kicks butt is getting out there and people are playing it, so. <laughs> that's awesome man very good to hear that yeah and and it's really funny that um with 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 you know getting to listen to your music and then finding out where you guys are from because <laughs> you know i got you guys from brazil i got my friends ecliptica from brazil and then i just got this other band I can't remember the name of them now. They're another Brazilian band, though. Oh, Machine Age. Another one. So, it's just like, there's a lot of good metal coming from your area, and I, I'm just very excited about it. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy that uh, at least you have, you're have you having the, the opportunity to get to know those bands, because 99% of what people overall know in metal is just basically they're uh, mostly Amer American bands, you know, or, or some some specific bands from Europe, uh, from some specific place uh, places, and they're all like signed. They all have a lot of of media behind them. A lot, a lot of people, you know, throwing money in their careers. Uh, and here in Brazil, that just does, doesn't happen. So it, it's very. I'm very glad to see that people are uh, are com are coming and seeing what ca you know what we're doing here, because there are several so many good bands they just don't have the kind of exposure needed right. you know, but if, it, if they had if they had exposure you know I, I'm pretty much sure that they would kick ass you know, all over the world but unfortunately that just doesn't happen right and as I've been networking with these different bands from the same you guys from the same area you know like when when I when we hooked up and we're gonna interview you know I was talking to uh, I always say his name wrong but Gilherm from from Ecliptica, and I'm like, hey, you heard of Dynahead? And he's like, yeah, I know them guys. So, <laughs> yeah, I, Ecliptica, really? I, yeah, uh, I, I guess the um, the camarad camaraderie between it almost seems like you know when when you mention another band and these guys know them, they're like, oh yeah, they're really. It's almost like everybody's kind of rooting for your for each other. That's kind of what I've gotten from it, I guess. Yeah, because uh, uh, actually we have uh, all the bands here. They, everyone pretty much know everyone, even though it's a very, very big country, and, and it has so so many bands. But we always try hard to see what other people are doing, you know, so that we can build something stronger in Brazil, you know. And sometimes people from outside, from the U.S. or from Europe or for, from other countries, they look here and they see this burgeoning scene, you know, this kind right. of a uh, growing thing, you know, that's ju just waiting to be found. And, and and it's and we get very happy, you know, when people just come and get interested and start seeing. There are some DJs that they kind of became addicted to it. Like they work, uh, they started like going after all of the Brazilian bands they could get their hands on, <laughs> you know. Uh -huh. and they just start to you know promote them and and help them spread them out. Uh, it's because you know. There's so much quality and you know, and and so many ba good bands that people just don't expect to find here. Right. 
Yeah, it, it's awesome. You know, and don't get me wrong, I love American metal bands, but the Brazilian metal bands, as with a lot of European metal bands, they just have a different sound that you don't get in America, and that's I think that's kind of why I'm drawn so so much. Because I probably yeah. I probably interviewed I, I, more non-American bands than I have American bands, so. Yeah, I think that's that's that has a lot to do with the cultural background, you know, because in the United States, uh, you have a huge uh, industry. It's an industry. It's people making money, and so there are a lot of trends that come and go, and a lot of things, you know, a lot of fabricated bands that are coming out all the time, um, and and you have a, a whole, you know, I, I think that culturally, uh, the United States culture is much more similar to Brazil than Europe. You know, kind of in Europe, people grow listening to you know to folk music and classical music. It, it's what's in the roots. You know, uh, here in Brazil, we have uh, we have samba, we have um, uh, lots of different African cultural influences. You know, mixed with some European stuff. Uh, in the United States, you have uh, the old blues and you have the old country and you have all of this. So that it's kind of uh, of mixing your culture. So, it, so I think that Brazil and in the United States is pretty similar. Right. The difference is that in the United States you have an industry and here we don't. So right. here, uh, I guess that in Brazil people are much more in it for for love of music, you know, than for the money, and that's kind of make a, a huge difference in how the band sounds. You know, because if here in Brazil people just don't give a flying fuck about if it's going to sell or not. And in, well, in the United States, that's kind of mandatory. You know, you have to worry because you need to sell and you need to, you know, to do whatever's in trend. You need to play like metalcore and do exactly like the other bands are doing, or else you're not going anywhere. You know. Right. Well, and if you don't love, if you if, if you're not in it for the love of it, you're it's stuff. It's gonna it's gonna come out in the sound. Yeah. I mean. Uh, the love is essential, you know, but yep. sometimes it gets a little bit in secondary when you are dealing with a market that is as as functional as, as it is in the United States. And here it's not functional. Here it's completely uh, artistic, you know. It's just, just we don't have money, so you know, we just don't have this kind of concern. Right. And I think that's very healthy you know, for the music. Yep. So what, uh, you know, before you actually got into, you know, had a band and all that stuff, what kind of what were your musical influences growing up and you know that just got you into metal it's funny because when i was a kid uh, i really never cared much about music you know um, my father is very into music he, he's very well uh, he knows a lot of musicians here in brazil especially in, in bossa nova and you know and th those kinds of feuds um, but i never really cared about it but when i when i was an early teenager like 12 years old I just went and, uh, like you know the metal came like a a, a wall in my, in my face you know because right. suddenly I was I was really addicted to rock music and to metal music you know but, but it, it all started pretty much I guess with all of those grunge bands you know that were going on uh, like Pro Jam Medicine Chains you know because I was a kid, you know, that, that, that's the kind of music that kids listen. And, and that's really what made me get interested in music. And then from that on, I started discovering Brazilian music, you know. And then I started seeing, oh my God, and I, it, that's when pe things started. But it all started with like alternative rock from the 90s for me. All right, cool. How did you guys come up with the name Dynahead for the name of the band? Yeah, well, that, that's a little bit of a secret. <laughs> because it, it doesn't doesn't have much of a deep meaning you know uh, actually we we just try to keep it to ourselves you know maybe someday we will reveal it uh, but by now you know just kind of a secret oh, top secret I, I, I love it <laughs> what is your favorite song to perform live to perform live I mean, is there one song that just gets the crowd going more than any other one that you just know it's going to just bring an energy that's crazy mm, uh, there are a couple uh, from the first album there's a song called Bloody Shies which is a pretty old song and it's a very simple song actually compared to the other songs uh, but I, th I think that that's exactly that's why people like it so much you know, there's a lot of energy when you play it live you know, people go really crazy with it uh, and from the new album 
I guess maybe uh, Eventide, because it's also a simpler song, you know, have kind of a, a more uh, a more commercial, I don't know, uh, chorus, you know, and, and people really are getting into the song. When, when you play it live, people go, oh, yeah, you know? Cool. What, um, speaking of music, if I was to grab your um, iPod or MP3 player from you right now, what would I find you listening to? Well, right now, I was listening to Glenn Hughes, um, but in my, in my, I mean, in my player right now open, I mean, my face right now, I'd say that it was like uh, Jeff Buckley, um, some, some uh, prog metals uh, from some of those new bands like, you know, uh, Periphery from the United States and all this kind of thing. Uh, but right now I'm, I'm really into some some blues rock, you know. So I've listened to a lot of, of Joe Bonamassa and, and Glenn Hughes and that new project that I like, uh, Black Country Communion, which I think it's great. Yes, Black uh, Country Communion uh, is amazing. Agreed. Derek Trucks and uh, uh, Derek Trucks, um, some other like uh, I've been listening to Seven Days today as well. I'm just kind of dragging from my memory, you know, what I listen today in my car. That's pretty much it. But right now. Very cool. Very cool. I'm listening to a band called Blue Felix right now in my car. Blue Felix. Yeah, they're 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 right now they're touring not they're touring with Mushroom Head and Moto Grader. Mushroom Head, yeah, Mushroom Head is that 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 band is from my time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, uh well, I've never never heard of them. I'm going to uh, Blue Felix, right? Blue Felix, yeah. Um they're on Facebook, and I think they have some tunes on there. And I actually interviewed them a couple weeks ago. I'm going to be playing their interview back, uh, not this coming week, but the week after. They're good, on. I'm going I'm after them. It, yeah, it's they, it's like um, in the same vein of Mushroom Red, Mushroom, Mushroom Head, like... That's yep, some, same, uh, st same style. Um, their style, album yeah. was produced by... Um, oh, my brain, I'm going brain dead here, but the guy from uh, Slipknot produced their album. Oh, cool, yeah. Uh, I really like Slipknot as well, you know, so. Yeah, I think uh, uh, we're all home here. Very good. Okay, so anything else that you want, Metalhead Radio listeners and everybody else that's going to listen to this when I upload it to uh, YouTube to know about Dynahead? Well, uh, I think that I really want people to know this. If you have a moment, go and listen. You know, or on our website, you can find the first album for free download. And the second one is for sale. It, it, we're almost sold out. So if you want one, you better be quick, like the <laughs> CD. But you know, you can find it also on, on Google if you go for it. You know, there, there, there are like for downloading many blogs out there. We don't give a flying fuck about if you're downloading it or not. You know, just just have a listen. You know, hope you enjoy it. And if you like it, spread the word. Right. Is it available like on Amazon and iTunes and stuff? Yeah, it's on Amazon. It's on iTunes. Okay. It's on. It's everywhere. Uh, okay. It's on City Baby. It is on. We also have a new. Uh, we also have a, 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 an iPhone and Android app that you can download. You know, so you get up to date, updated every time that we have some news. You know, we also have a new music video as well for Eventide that just put it on, online like ten ten days ago. Uh, there's a new music video. Just just go on YouTube and search for Dynahead Eventide, and you're going to see uh, people are really liking it. You know, and hope you like as well. Okay, cool. So, if I order a physical copy, will you sign it for me? Absolutely. Uh, if if you want a copy signed, you know, uh, or for, for the listener, if he's interested, you just have to em just email us and say, yeah, uh, just bought a copy, you know, like the, give, give us our name and we'll be happy to sign. Okay, excellent. Very cool. Very cool. Um, okay, so I'm about out of questions and I'm about out of time because I actually have another interview in 15 minutes with another band. <laughs> so... Um, but the last thing I'd like to do is, well, first of all, thank you very much for taking the time to, uh, to, to get with me and talk to me and just kind of help spread the word about you guys and let everybody know what's up. And, yeah, just appreciate, I really appreciate the fact uh, how down to earth you guys are and, uh, you know, just willing to sit down and chat about stuff and I appreciate it. Hey Spencer, it's great to hear that. I hope everyone, all, all the listeners, enjoy the music. You know, and thanks for inviting us. Thanks for having us, and, and, and thanks for playing and for helping spread our music. To us, that's kind of really what uh, makes.
makes a difference. You know, that's that, that's the beauty of it. Thanks for having interest in bands from the third world. You know, for in unsigned bands. You know, uh, and I, you know, and, and, and opening your doors to people that are not really uh, part of the system. <laughs> Yeah, well, I tell you what, if you ever tune, I don't know if you've tuned in any of my shows, but if you ever tune into one of my shows, you'll pretty much find the majority of the music I play, I bet most of it you've never heard before. Because that's awesome. that's what we do at Metalhead. We help promote bands that are, you know, there's a, my, what I always say is there's a lot of really great bands out there that just need help getting heard. And that's, that's kind of my motto. And that's what we do at Metalhead Radio. Absolutely, absolutely. Congratulations and keep doing that. You're doing a great job. Yeah, it's it's our pleasure. I tell you what, every day I get new music. It's like Christmas every day to me because I get some new band that's that rocks in my email. <laughs> yeah, so it's Christmas every day. Every day, man. I, yeah, music is the thing. Hey, one last thing. Can you make a couple radio tags for me, real quick? Yeah, sure, man. But uh, how'd you rather? Do you want me to 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 do it right now? But I can I can record in my studio. Send you via email if you like. That would be beautiful if you want to. If you're willing to do that for me, I would love it. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll do it, it uh, as soon as possible. Man. Okay, so if you can make one for me and then make one for the radio station. So ju just sure. those two, one for myself and one for the station, that would be awesome. Yeah, sure, man. Uh, after we're offline, you know, I'll email you, you know, just you give me the info, you know, and I, I'll be happy to do it. Okay, I will, I'll email you in a little bit today and I'll let you know. I'll, I'll, yeah, sounds great. Great, man. Okay, well, Kyle, I appreciate it again, and you have a great day, and take care, man. You too, man. Great right, day. We'll, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye. All right, bye. What's up, dude?